My name is Paul Volkemer. I was a volunteer firefighter in Princeton, Minnesota on the Baldwin Township Fire Department. I was an elected official and uh, I'm one of the founding members of the fire department in Baldwin and I was an elected supervisor. And about five years ago I brought a whistleblower case uh, in district court as a result of uh, our newly formed fire department the chief decided to start a dive team and um, the dive team was funded through his personal credit card most of it was uh, passed through without proper paperwork identification but I, as a concerned citizen and a father and a founder, uh, started this, helped start this fire department, and I, uh, I knew that there was something wrong, and I got elected to the town board, and I discovered that the township had gotten eighty thousand dollars over the levied amount, and I brought this information to the Minnesota Association Township Attorney, and he indicated by law I had to take it to the state auditor. The state auditor then did two reports stating that it was illegal for the township to have a dive team. No formal revolution, resolution was ever passed. They went $45,000 over in the equipment item alone. And this was a new fire department under five years, so there are a lot of things we could have bought. And we had three tiny lakes in our township, the deepest of which was 11 feet. And so we had no need for a dive team whatsoever. I spent almost um, $100,000 of my funds preparing for trial. And uh, a week before trial, a district court judge, Judge Mary Yunker, uh, threw my case out on a summary judgment. The case didn't qualify for summary judgment. My former attorney then the next day gave me a bill for $24,000 for doing the summary judgment when he had told me that it would cost $50,000 to reach trial. I had already spent well over that at this point. So I asked for uh, an adjustment on the bill and I gave him a, an offer, asked for a counter offer and for mediation. And instead he sued me in Hennepin County Court and we went before Judge Lloyd Zimmerman, who determined mediation should be done, and ordered mediation. And then a week before mediation, my former attorney filed summary judgment, and Judge uh, Zimmerman set up the hearing the day before the mediation he himself set up. And <clears throat> we go to the mediation, the hearing, and my my attorney says that mediation is tomorrow. My former attorney had left me without an attorney illegally in the appellate court. Uh, I had paid all bills and I was asking for mediation, paid his expenses. He refused to go to mediation as required by the rules of professional ethics and Judge Zimmerman said I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to grant summary judgment from the bench and he leaned over from the bench and said he granted him $63,000 the day before the mediation and the $24,000 bill. said, I'm granting him $63,000 and good luck in your mediation tomorrow. I took this to the appellate court where they denied my right to an oral argument on a motion to the Chief Justice Toussaint that was granted in one day without my attorney ever receiving it. Judge Zimmerman released my $30,000 supersedious bond, which was my wife's annuity, while it was in the appellate court. A supersedious bond stays all funds until you're out of court. He released the supersedious bond to my former attorney months before the case was out of court because I took it all the way to the Supreme Court and did so on an illegal writ of execution, cleaned out my checking account, and then the appellate court granted him 
another $24,000 in bills for the non-appearance before the appellate court that I didn't get. I was denied transcripts of my hearings in both cases, so I filed under the Minnesota Data Practices Act. Uh, I wrote a letter to Judge Gr to uh, the Chief uh, Administrator Gritner, Fred Gritner, of the Minnesota Administrator's Office. He wrote me back a letter, a cordial letter, and said that we do not have to supply you with a transcript of your own hearing in the state of Minnesota. I said, well, under the Data Practices Act, I've been told that you do. He wrote back another letter. This one was on Supreme Court, State Supreme Court stationery that said, the Minnesota legislature has determined that in the state of Minnesota, through a statute, 13.9, the entire judicial branch in the state of Minnesota and all of its subsidiaries are exempt from the Public Data Practices Act. Therefore, we do not have to give you any information on your own trial. And denied me once again the transcript. So, to date, I owe $98,000 to my former attorney for his last three weeks of work when he left me illegally without an attorney in the appellate court. I had to hire another attorney from out of the country and fly him in. And I took Mr. Fabian to the appellate court thinking they wouldn't uphold one of the contentions that Judge Zimmerman held from the courtroom on the day he granted the summary judgment. My attorney said the rules of professional ethics, those are the rules which guide all attorneys in the state of Minnesota, which they sign, state that uh, he can't leave me without an attorney and he's violating his contract by doing so. And my former attorney wrongfully pleaded that I would not pay him when the federal magistrate that was set up to do the mediation said there was no indication of non-payment. You made a counteroffer, you asked for mediation. The rules of professional ethics demand that. Judge Zimmerman from the bench said, I'm granting summary judgment because the rules of professional ethics are not an implied covenant in a legal services contract in the state of Minnesota. In other words, your attorney does not have to use ethics when he deals with you. And as a whistleblower in the state of Minnesota, if you whistleblow, you're going to be punished. I have testified before two House Senate hearings. There's currently legislation going through Minnesota to try and eliminate the election of judges. They want them all appointed. And the Chief Justice Gildea, who was appointed, like most others, is pushing for this. So is former Governor Al Quie. I've been pushing against it. I've been working with groups to fight it, and I've testified before multiple Senate and House hearings. I think that Minnesota's reached the point where the judicial system has no oversight whatsoever. The Judicial Standards Board and the Board of Professional Responsibility are just merely arms of the Bar Association. They have no teeth. Uh, the Judicial Standards Board, in fact, says if in on their website, if you have a problem with a ruling by a judge, like in my case, the summary judgment did not apply, then you need to go to the appellate court. I went to the appellate court. I tried to get the transcript to go to the Supreme Court. I did go to the Supreme Court and showed criminal activity by judges on the district and the appellate court level. I later found out that Judge Zimmerman, who had granted the summary judgment to me, um, had a former law clerk that was now an attorney for my, for my former attorney, one of his attorneys in his uh, staff. And he also headed up the Minnesota Employment Law Division, of which my attorney had his licensing. So there was a cozy relationship there, and I exposed this after the fact. And I'm currently still in court on the billing situation. And uh, uh, it's taken my retirement, most of my funds. Um, it's called great, great anguish to me and my family. It destroyed a fire department. We have, I have a videotape of a house burning down and they didn't have proper personnel to fight the fire because all of the, many of the Dayside firemen had quit over the dive team issue. 
Uh, we pleaded with the courts to resolve this for the safety of the community, but instead they covered it up. Uh, myself and a number of firemen and citizens petitioned for a grand jury because the dive team was called the Sherburn County Dive Team, even though Baldwin taxpayers paid all the money. And in an August 9th meeting, 2005, Sheriff Anderson, Bruce Anderson, the county sheriff said, if there's an investigation, I can't do it because I have a conflict of interest. He then proceeded to do the investigation. And the current sheriff, Joel Brott, did a conflicted investigation. Instead of investigating the facts, it merely chastised and it was more of a shoot the messenger report, going after the firefighters like myself that had raised the issues. And so we had petitioned for a grand jury before Judge Robert Varco. We showed him a videotape of the sheriff in a public meeting saying, I have a conflict of interest. We put a memo in front of Judge Varco. The memo was from Kathleen Haney, the county attorney in Sherburn County. In that memo, she said, I read the state auditor's report and I concur with the state auditor that the formation of the dive team was for an illegal purpose. Therefore, I'm asking the township to pay back $23,000 to Baldwin Township for a dual paging system that the county supplied because it was for an illegal purpose. Six months later, she reviewed the disingenuous sheriff's report that was conflicted and said she found nothing to research, there was no criminal activity, and nothing for it needs to be examined. So I filed a civil case, and that civil case I took all the way to the Supreme Court, and I received summary judgment at the district court level and reaffirmed at the appellate court, even though in the appellate court, 45 out of the 48 statements of fact by Judge Yunker in the district court were proven false by the record. Virtually everything in her record that she showed was false. Summary judgment is, was, had a good intention when it was first formulated, but has become the most abused tool in the judicial system. If they want a case to go away, they use summary judgment. In my case, there were disputed issues of genuine fact. I had two stated auditor's reports showing that monies passed through illegally, that they didn't have proper verification. Much of the money was spent, I had hot mails, for over $900, not a receipt, just a hotmail, paid by our, sh our trained treasurer. I had a dive team, it's, it looks like a receipt, but it says in huge letters, this is not a receipt, $975 or whatever, paid for, submitted. She paid on, our treasurer paid on claims that were merely statements from his credit card company, no accompanying documentation. And in court, the attorneys for the township said that that was su sufficient to satisfy the requirements in the state of Minnesota, which is totally false. My case didn't qualify for summary judgment. And um, I think that after training 250 hours without pay, losing my pension on this, I deserve better than this. I was an elected official for the board members that voted me off the fire department were there and were involved with the fire department when the uh, dive team was formed. They never had a formal resolution. In the courts, they claim that this, the township has now resolved its spending practices, and so therefore they don't need to look into this. Some months after this, while I was still on the board, the head of the maintenance department, this is a large township, it's larger than the city we're adjacent to, a population of over 6,000. He came to the board and wanted a new one-ton plow truck. I asked him what was wrong with the plow tump we currently have, Terry. Nothing, not a thing. I'd like to get a new plow truck. Well, I rallied against it. I'm conservative in nature and got it voted down. Next month he showed up and again put it on the agenda. I want a brand new one-ton plow truck. Again, it was voted down. A month after that, just prior to the next month's meeting, I'm driving by the township and I see a brand new plow truck, painted, detailed out, parked in the parking lot. I stop, I ask Terry, Terry, what's this truck doing here? Well, we got a brand new plow truck. I said, we voted down the plow truck. I know, but the 
Board chair told me to go ahead and order it right after. So they had ordered it. The truck was custom built by Boyer and Rogers. $17,000 worth of equipment, painted, delivered, invoiced, insured, plates, tabs, everything. I brought all the information to that meeting last night and said we spent $50,000 on a dive team. Now we've spent, that wasn't approved, now you've spent $50,000 on a dive truck that has been twice voted down. I went and filed a complaint with the same sheriff office that self-investigated the dive team that they were involved in. And what they determined was that it was a good thing that you stopped this, Paul, because there's no fault, no harm. They sent the truck back, and because you caught it, there's no need to press any charges. I sent it to the state auditor, no action was taken. They said that it's okay as long as the truck went back. I asked the criminal investigator, I said if I go into a bank and I rob it, and I take $50,000 and I back out of the bank and your sheriff's officers are there, I didn't realize that all I have to do is go back in and hand the money over the counter and I'm home free. Well, that's different. Well, that's not different. This truck was invoice billed, and I had taped conversations with the Boyer truck sales manager screaming at me that they bought the truck because in the board meeting they told me, no, we were just looking at it. So also this year, 2010, two years ago, their auditor, Dern DeWitter, same company that missed the $80,000 overage, whom I said they should get a new audit company. They spent $26,000 on an audit and they missed an $80,000 overage in one line item. They did a new audit, but now they're being careful. And they said it's illegal to exceed the levied amount in any one area on an audit. And then they list the following areas as being in excess of the levy. So the spending practices continue. There are issues. The fire department was, was destroyed as a result of this, and it's just now starting to recover. But the only one that was damaged here the most was myself for whistleblowing, something you can't do in Minnesota.